Hello and welcome back to the one, the only Welsh Watch podcast. Today is episode eight and I'm joined by the usual idiots. Ben, the man child himself. Hello. Jack. Hello. That is you. Tom. Hi everyone. And Lee. Hello. On today's episode, we've got quite a decent one, I think. We talked to all-time leading Wales goal scorer Helen Ward. We talk about some of the players that may be going to the Euros, and then we go straight on to our normal predictions. Let's get into it, the Welsh Watch segment. First of all, we're going to talk about Josh Sheehan, Newport County midfielder. He's had a brilliant season as Newport's sitting third and only two points off the top with two games in hand. Let's just get straight into it. Ben, is this the point for him to go just straight into the squad? Not straight into the squad, but have a chance in the squad. I mean, he's 25, 26 now. Is this the time? Well, he was in, he was included in the last squad. He was, uh, I don't think he played, but he's been included. And I, th- I think he goes to the Euros as long as Newport keep up their form. He did actually recently re- receive a red card, but, you know, we look past that. But no, I, I, I'm, I haven't seen him much other than, you know, the other periods I've seen of Newport. But if he's in the Wales squad, he's in League Two, then he clearly has to be doing something right. So, no, he's, he looks good to me. And I'd, I'd like to see him at the Euros. Tom, what do you think? I know you've focused on him and watch him quite a lot. What do you think about him? How do you how do you think he fits into that Wales squad? Yeah, um, I think potentially he's got a place um, as another option in the midfield. He's not going to be a starter, um, but he's definitely someone that could potentially make a break for the squad. Um, he's not a goal scorer midfielder. Um, he's a bit more of a defensive minded player. Um, but he's got two goals this season for Newport and one assist. Um, he's played quite a lot as well, been virtually ever present, apart from obviously the red card that Ben mentioned. Um, but yeah, he's definitely an option that would be worth a look at. Lee, do you think this is the time for him? Obviously, 26 years of age or 25. It's, it's either now or never, really, for his career. And obviously, this is probably the best season he'll have, he's currently had. And do you see him moving on if Newport failed to go up? Do you think he might be in the championship side come next year? Um, I, I think he has to be because if he wants to progress and be in that Wales team, be part of that starting eleven, he has to be playing at a higher level. No disrespect to Newport, but he just needs to be in that championship club, maybe even a Premier League club. But yeah, he needs more games. If he can get more games, I think he'll do much better. Jack, what do you think? Can you see him getting a move to a higher club if Newport failed to go up? Um, move to a higher club, probably not um, at this moment in time. But obviously, Newport such a good run of form. Well, not yeah. But uh, yeah, being third, if they can go up, brilliant. But honestly, I know he's the age of 25, but he reminds me a little bit of Joe Allen when I've seen him play. I'm not, comp- I'm not saying that same level of skill. But give him a few years. I know he's already 25, but when Joe Allen drops off, similar positions. I could see him mm, this year, like Ben. I think he will go to the Euros. He could be a backup for Joe Allen or anyone else in the midfield. But, yeah, I think his game style is kind of similar to Joe Allen. So I, I think he has a bit of potential to be better. Ben, you've just heard the comparison about Joe Allen. How does he... How is he different to the players we already have? Obviously, Tom just mentioned that he's not really a goal scoring midfielder. Mm. Is do we need more of a goal scoring midfielder, or is he the perfect fit for the team in the coming years or right now? I think he is a good fit. I think I think our attack is where our goals are going to come from, not our midfield. I don't think our midfield is going to be high scoring in the years, or just even generally. So I think he is the right kind of player. I think in a few years he could actually start. Depends on where he does his career does move. I don't think he'll get those those starts with the position that he's in now. He's in League Two. You know, Newport having a good season, but it is League Two at this point and we're looking at the Euros now. But no, it's promising. So I, I think in a few years, a couple of years, he's still not, you know, sort of an age where he can still peak. So I'd, I'd like to, you know, see where he goes next, basically. For me, I'd play him against Mexico in the friendly that we've got. Why not? Put them all in the squad, see what they can do. And then I might go from there. And like you say, he's one for the future. Um, Next, we're going to talk about Ben Woodburn. Obviously, everyone remembers that goal against Austria where 
the national anthem was ringing around the stadium. It's in from like 25 yards. Oh, what a goal. My guy. But he's had a difficult spell recently. He has had um, spells at Oxford United, Blackpool, where Blackpool, he failed to score a goal in 10 appearances, I do believe. And then um, he's back to Liverpool now, looking for another club. What do you think, Ben? Do you think that's his... That's, obviously, he's a young player. Do you think that's him over for the Wales squad for this year? He's a young player, yeah. And but it seems like it seems like a while ago that we were talking about him as like Liverpool's new up and coming, you know. So it does seem like a while. And even that Austria goal, like that was quite a while ago now, I'd say. So it's not good that he's dropped off in terms of like the club. He's you know he's not playing for Liverpool anymore. He's playing a lot lower down. So it's not good for that reason. But he's got some experience with Wales. He's he's you know 10, 10 appearances. So. I think maybe we need to keep an eye on him, if anything. I'd like to see him maybe be given an opportunity in the team, but you can't really see him go into the Euros at this point in time just based on where he's at. Jack, like obviously we've got a lot of players who fill out the wide positions. I mean, there are a lot of strong players at the moment. Do you think there's any room for him? Uh, personally, I don't think. Not in the current state he's in. Um, obviously... Going back to Liverpool, I don't see him getting any games. So, yeah, a move away again is what he needs. But obviously, a Blackpool not getting any goals. The form wasn't the best. And, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of competitive space in the midfield and on the wing. So, I can't really see him fit in, especially this year. But only being 21, loads of potential for the future. So, you know, in a few years' time, he could, he could have one season. His form could be up here. And then... He could be chosen in the first team squad, but right now, I don't think it's a spot for him. I completely agree with what you're saying, Jack. To be fair, he's obviously he's a big talent. We've all seen it. That game against Austria, I mean, he deserves a place for in every squad coming up just for that goal alone. But he's, he's obviously saying he's 21. He's got a lot of time to progress, and I think if he finds a new club, then he might progress under there. But at Liverpool now, Wales future. For now, I don't think he's, he's got any room. What do you think, Tom? Do you reckon there's if there's an injury, does he take that place or have we got too many players? Um, I think potentially if we've got injury problems in that sort of area, um, then he's someone that could potentially make the squad because obviously he does have that versatility that we've mentioned with players like Ethan Ampadu. Um, he can play behind the striker. He can play out wide. So he does offer a few options. Um and he's had a rough time with injuries. Um, obviously, that goal that you mentioned three and a half years ago now. Um, it, it's hard to believe it, but it's three and a half years ago. Um, and his career's sort of stagnated a little bit since then. Like, we all thought he was going to push on and go to the next level, but he hasn't. And the injuries have been a part of that. Um, but, yeah, as you've all said, uh, a lone move away in January is what he needs. Um just needs to find some game time and find some form um, because it'd be a bit of a shame for like he had a lot of potential and it'd be a shame to not see him reach that potential in the years to come but yeah as you've all said um, not really in the picture for the Euro squad at the moment but if injuries occur in the right areas then he could be in there. Lee, do you think the injuries and the confidence shortage is the reason why we won't see him in the Wales squad coming up? Because obviously a few years ago, Tom said that when he scored that goal, everyone was talking about him being in the Liverpool squad. I think he scored one or two for Liverpool at the time, a few games after that. Do you think that peak, that was the peak of him at the moment? I don't think it was the peak of him. All young players early in their career, they get bright spells, but it's it's... It's the show of their character. If they can get back to that level, especially after going through injuries and fighting for places against top players, if he can show that character, he's going to be a bright player. And I think now is not the time to focus on him. He should just kick on where, where he is now, see if he can get a low move away. And maybe in one or two years, whether it's the World Cup or the next Euros, he could be a valuable member of the Wales squad. 
So do we all think that this isn't his time? Do you think next few tournaments? Yeah. Yeah? I think maybe there's still a chance for being included in the squad, but yeah, it's looking unlikely. Ben, if you were if you were his agent, where are you looking? What clubs are you looking for? Well, I mean, he should be looking at championship level. If he's been, you know, he's been in the Liverpool system for a while. If you look at the championship level. I know he's not had that luck in term in, in terms of the last couple of years, but that's where I reckon that's where he should be, you know, be looking. Well, there we are. Everyone knows who Ben Woodburn is, but keep an eye on what he does in the next few years, where he goes from Liverpool. And I'm sure there's plenty of goals in his future and a big Wales career coming up. But let's move on to the bit you've all been waiting for, the interview with Helen Ward. Wales top goal scorer with 43 goals and me and Ben interviewed her the other day. How do you think it went, Ben? I think it was really good. She gave us a lot to work with and I, if I were you, go watch the whole thing. I agree with that. I hope you enjoy. Go check it out. Hello, Helen. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. First things first, the most important question of the whole interview, how are you doing? How's, how's life <laughs> at the moment? Yeah, it's okay. I think uh, all things considered with everything that's going on in the world, I can't have too many complaints. Obviously, homeschooling and not being able to go out and train and, and play with Watford at the moment is a bit tricky, but you know, at the end of the day, my, my family and, and my close friends are safe and well, so... Yeah, we've just got to try and get through it. But I'm doing okay, thank you. Good. So, obviously, just leading on from what you say, how how would you say, obviously, we're in it right now in Wales? I don't know what it's like in England, because, really, you know, the news just keeps changing at the moment. But how, how have you dealt with lockdown at the moment? Yeah, it has been tough. I think it's pretty similar across, you know, much of the UK right now um, in terms of the rules and regulations can't really go anywhere or do anything other than a little bit of exercise outside and, and obviously essential food shopping. So I think it's quite similar everywhere. Um, for me with the two kids, uh, as I mentioned, I've got a bit of homeschooling to do um, and then try and fit in some individual training of my own, whether that's, you know, we, we bought a treadmill the first time we locked down, which has been a lifesaver for, for me and my husband. Um, so I use that sort of three or four times a week and then try and get outside to do some training as well when I can. But yeah, it's just taking it day by day. I think everybody's in the same sorts of positions. You know, some people have it a lot harder, but we're all trying to get through the same storm, as you, as they say, um, just doing it in our own way. And at the minute, it's just going day by day and, and taking everything as it comes, not trying to look too far ahead or, or get too caught up in it all. And obviously on, the, on Monday, the news broke of Jane Ludlow stepping down from her role as the head coach. Were you shocked to see that news come out? Yeah, um, we're all taken aback by it, I think. And I think I can speak for the majority, if not all of the squad with that. Um, I think in terms of timing, if it was going to happen, it would probably be now in, you know, in the sense that we finish one campaign and we've got a little bit of time until the next one starts. Um, so if, you're gonna, if the management change is going to happen, that's when it's going to be. But that, that's not to say we're expecting it by any means. Um, what Jane's done in the last six years has been incredible for Welsh women's football. Um, she's put us on the map. Um, I think her profile initially when she came in, having, as I said before, she's won everything you can in club football. So for a, a big name like her to come come back to her home country and, and manage the national team instantly sort of raised interest, which was fantastic for us. Um, so, yeah, we, we were sort of all looking ahead to this year with, with the assumption that we were going to carry on and, you know, build on what we've been doing with Jane, um, but but that's not to be. And you know, obviously, we all wish her her well in her next endeavours, whatever they may be. Um, but yeah, it was it was disappointing to to hear the news on Monday. Um, but it's the the realities of football now. I suppose you you can't ever get too comfortable in a position. You know, whether that's playing or or managing. Um, and women's football is sort of becoming the same not the same as men's but you know there's a higher turnover of of coaches and managers in men's football and although I don't want women's football to go in exactly the same direction the the sort of pressures and the the things surrounding it are, are perhaps catching up and yeah that's just something that's that we're going to have to deal with I suppose but um yeah obviously like I said what Jane's done has been fantastic for us and and we'll never forget the, the six years that we've had with her as our manager. 
Do you see any potential future replacement? <laughs> Obviously, the Cardiff City manager has just left. Neil Harris is available <laughs> for he's available for the Welsh setup. Do you, who do you see as a potential future replacement for Jane Ludlow? Because obviously it's big shoes to fill. Yeah, huge. Um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I'm sure that the FAW would be, you know, putting their, their feelers out there and, and getting the job description and the job role out for those who, who may be interested. And I'm sure there's one or two that they might target. But I honestly, I couldn't say. I think it's, like you said, it's a big job to fill. It's very different to club football coming into international football. You don't have the same sort of time to affect your players on the training pitch. Um, you get probably six or seven camps a year where you're with your players for a week to 10 days. It's not a lot of time to, to get your ideas across. So it's a different sort of coaching and different sort of style of management. Um, sorry, I couldn't apologise for the noise in the background. It's my dog playing with something. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they'll, they're going to go through a very thorough process and not make any rushed decisions. Um, you know, for me and for the girls, we just want the right person for the job. We don't need it to tick boxes for, for anything. We just want the right person that's going to come in with, with the right mindset to kind of try and, and build on what we've, we've already done because I think we're in a good place at the moment. Um, I don't think there's any need to scrap what we're doing and, and start all over. So hopefully it's someone that can come and build on what we've got. Well, it might be Neil Harris, how do we know? But um, <laughs> as a fan looking into the world of professional football, I've always been intrigued to know how the professional players actually find out that the manager has left. So on Monday, when the news actually broke, or you might have known the day before, how did you find out? Yeah, so we, we got sent um, sort of an email as a squad just to say, look, this is what's happening. Um, they obviously didn't want us to find out on social media, but at the same time, they weren't going to break the news to us too soon because, you know, as much as it's embargoed, you're going to talk to friends and family and there's every chance that, that things like that can get out, as, as we've seen in in football in the past. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's my son this time. Um, so, yeah, we, we just got told sort of as a whole squad, um, obviously they'd rather have done it, I assume, in person or you know, a bit more uh, together, but we can't, we can't do that right now. So yeah, we, we found out earlier that day um, just to be sort of made aware of, of what was going to be coming out on in the news and in social media over the next few hours. So yeah, we didn't find out any, you know, really any earlier than anyone else. And I don't think it was a decision that was made sort of massively in advance. I'm sure discussions were being had by various people, but yeah, we, we didn't find out too much before you guys. And just for this final segment, obviously the men's team are going to be going into the Euros this summer. Huge campaign ahead of them. Uh, just obviously, their last campaign in the Euros obviously went pretty well, getting to the semi-finals. How far do you reckon this team can go, though? Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Um, I, I mean, I don't know if the, the setup of the competition will have an impact. If it is going to be across Europe rather than just in one country, I don't know if that makes any difference because I do know that in 2016 they had their home base and they really made the most of that um, and I think it was a big part of their success is having that that, that home sort of base in Bernard I think it was um, in France and I think that not having that may make a difference when you're constantly moving around it's difficult to you know sleep in different hotels and that kind of stuff um, but in terms of the squad it's a very different squad it's very young this time round, um, obviously Gareth Bale's had his had his injury um, problems in in recent years and lack of game time at Real Madrid. Aaron Ramsey the same; he's had some some injury issues. So you just hope that when the tournament comes round, that they're going to be fit and ready to go. Because if they're if they're firing and playing well for Wales, then then Wales as a team plays well, um, and is a, it makes a massive difference. And the younger players thrive off that. Um, but I am, I'm excited. I think David Brooks, Daniel James, all these players, they really raise their game when they play for Wales. Harry Wilson, the youngsters in the middle, Ethan Ampadu, um, Joe Rodon, they, they've come on so much in recent years um, that I'm excited to see what they can do on the biggest stage. Um, you, you kind of write them off thinking, no, there's not enough experience. They haven't got 
you know, if Joe Allen's not been playing or, or Gareth or uh, Rambo's been injured, you kind of write them off, but then they pop up and, and win the game 1 0 when you're not expecting it. So it's it's going to be different, I think. Um, but maybe, maybe good that they go into it with, you know, not the expectation of 2016. Because um, again, like I said earlier in the podcast, I think the pre- when you go into things with that pressure, it, it can make life a bit more difficult. But maybe they won't have that. I think there'll be an expectation from within. And I think those that know the team, but from the outside, maybe they won't be expected to do quite as well as they did last time. And, and that might help them. So we're just going to play a little game in a way. This is, um, which player would you rather start at the Euros? So okay. I'll start. H- Harry Wilson or David Brooks? Obviously, they're two phenomenal players at the moment. Who would you rather have in the starting eleven, Or would you have both? I think I'd go David Brooks. Just because he has that... I think Harry Wilson's obviously fantastic and his ability from a set piece as well could be really important in and around the box or from you know corners as well. But I think David Brooks has got that that natural ability to go past the player. He glides with the ball um, and he's had that ever since he made his debut as a, as a young kid a few years ago. He, as soon as he stepped on the pitch, he thought he's a bit different. And he's, he's almost, I don't, I don't want to say it, but he's almost like a, a Ryan Giggs with the ball, the way he just, he looks so effortless as he, he runs with the ball the same as he does without it. Um, and I think that's a, an ability that not many players are fortunate to have. Um, so yeah, for me, I'd go David Brooks. Uh, this one's quite relevant at the moment, I'd say. Uh, Connor Roberts or Nico Williams? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, probably for experience, both in international and club football, at the minute, I'd, I'd edge for Connor Roberts. But what a replacement to have, what an alternative option to have in Nico Williams. You know, he's won the Premier League with Liverpool and okay, it might have only been a small part, but he's been part of a of a Premier League winning team. He's been in and around a, a squad of players that have have won the the Champions League, the World Cup, Club Cup, obviously the Premier League. And, you know, he's, he's, he's playing second field to, to a f- fantastic player in Trent Alexander-Arnold. So he's learning all the time. And although he's not playing every game, he's still training with some of the best players in the world. So he's, he's going to be in a good position. Um, and he has done really well when he has played for Wales. Again, he stepped on the pitch and he's he's upped his game. So I think if either of them played, it wouldn't be a bad thing. But if if I was picking a team and they were playing tomorrow, I'd probably just go for Connor Roberts just because of yeah that experience and, and the amount of games he's playing for Swansea and playing very well for Swansea at the moment as well. So on to the centre-backs. Joe Roden or Chris Methan? Yeah, um... Probably Joe Rodon. I'm probably going against what I've just said just now about <laughs> experience. Um, but what I've seen of him, he's been he's been fantastic. And I think, again, the move to Spurs is a great one. Um, and he'll be learning from some excellent players, the likes of Alder Verold and, you know, training and playing with Hugo Lloris behind him as well. He'll be learning an awful lot. Hopefully he can grow into it. And he, he had a fan, he's had a fantastic couple of games when he has had his chance. Um, and he, he's very elegant. He looks great and he's played a lot of games for Swansea um, at quite a young age as well. So although he hasn't got necessarily the experience of Chris Meppham, um, I think he's probably caught him up in terms of how he's playing and, and the, the ability he's got, you know, with and without the ball. Well, that's the thing. Rodon's even had the armband for a while against Finland briefly. But um, the final one, how Robson Carnu or Kiefer Moore? Oh. Very different options. Um, oh, that's really tough, that one. I, I love how, and I think, yeah, I think how I can't help but think of that goal <laughs> against Belgium. It was unbelievable. Um, my only worry is that he has had a period out of the side and out of the, the squad. Um, maybe not had as much game time in and around this this environment as, as Kiefer Moore. And Kiefer Moore has come in and, and done brilliantly and he's offered a different point of attack because of the attributes he's got he's strong and he brings others into play and, and he gets in and around the box and finishes you know those chances with, whether it's with his head or getting on the end of a low cross he's there or thereabouts and, and he's taken all of his goals very well um, I, I, 
I don't know. I guess it depends on the opposition and the type of team you're playing. But I'm going to have to make a decision, aren't I? So I'm going to go Kiefer Moore. Um, but it was hard. That was hard. <laughs> well, he's on form for the Bluebirds at the moment. But um, those are all the questions we got on today's podcast. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. We've, we've loved this time with you. And we hope to have you back at a future date. Right, so I hope you all enjoyed that interview with Helen Ward. I thought it was amazing. If you want to check the full length video out, then I'm sure it'll be somewhere on our channel. And I hope you enjoyed. Let's just get on to one thing before we go on to the predictions. And that is Ashley Williams. Today he announced his retirement, 10-4. 10-4. He announced his retirement and obviously he's had a... He's had a difficult last few years being at Bristol and a few spells away from at different clubs. But how can we all forget that year of 2016 where he took us to the semi-final, scored that equaliser against Belgium? And we might not have been we might not have been in the semi-final if it wasn't for Ashley Williams. It's quick, just a quick little go around. Lee, is he Wales' best captain ever? Why not? Yes. Tom? Yeah, definitely. Jack? Yes. Yeah, has to be. Ben? He's my captain. <laughs> He's my captain as well. Just for that year of 2016. Enjoy your retirement, Ashley Williams. I'm sure he'll be back in the game very soon because he is a warrior. But anyway, on to the predictions. Let's go. So let's start with Cardiff City. They host Millwall at home. This will be sec- the second game in charge for Mick McCarthy as finally Neil Harris was sacked. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. He was sacked. And there's a reason for that. Six losses in a row for the Bluebirds. Yeah, but Ben, Ben, he's been sacked, but who, who have we got now? We don't talk about that. Right, so last time out for the Bluebirds, it was a 1-0 loss um, to QPR, which was horrific. And that did spell the end for Neil Harris. Um, sat in 15 and only nine points off relegation. <laughs> Are we going to see the Bluebirds in League One next season? Their opponents, Millwall, last time out against Bristol City, they lost 3-0 and that was at home and got knocked out of the FA Cup in the fourth round. Uh, the last league game is a 1-0 loss away to Huddersfield. Well, so they're level on points with Cardiff City and they sit in 16. So it's a very big clash. It's a very big clash for the league. And someone, whoever wins, boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean. The last six matches between the two sides have all been draws. 13 out of 18 of the games have been draws. So if you lot don't go for draws, you're crazy. Um, Millwall have won just five of their last 36 away league matches in Wales. They've drawn 18 and lost 13. So I'll kick it off. I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw in the Welsh capital. What do you think, Ben? Let me explain before I say. I don't know. All right. So Cardiff have Barnsley next before that, but obviously that's the weekend game. But I think Mick McCarthy is going to... We're going to have a really good start on Jeremy. It's going to be... I think we're going to go like three games... Up straight away with wins so I do think we'll beat Millwall I don't think it'll be 4-1 and I think we're going to have a really good run but then I think it could not, but I think we're going to have a good start under him so 4-1 to Cardiff There's a reason you haven't had many correct in these predictions Jack what do you think? I mean what Ben has said hasn't really changed my mind <laughs> um, I'm probably going to stick with a nil-nil stalemate Tom what do you think? I think Ben needs to see someone about his brain. <laughs> ben just needs to see someone. Um, also, I do agree with him a little bit. I think you will get the win, but you're definitely not scoring four. Uh, I'm going to go 2-1 Cardiff. Lee, what do you think? Right, hear me out. I do agree with Ben. I do think you'll win at least three, maybe in a row. So, But I don't see you scoring four, like Tom said. So, 1-0 win. Can I just point out, the last time you predicted 4-1, we lost 1-0 at home to Bristol City. So that's enough from me. That's enough on that. Sky Sports were not very happy with you because you hyped it up and then they went to spot. But anyway, on to the team who are in second, Swansea City. They go away to Rotherham. Swansea are undefeated in seven games and they've won six out of those. Last game was against Notts Forest and it was a 5-1 thrashing in the FA Cup. And that takes them through to the fifth round. So... They might be on an FA Cup win and they might be getting promotion. Um, their last league match was a 2-0 victory away to Barnsley. Their second in the league, seven points off top with a game in hand. And away to Barnsley, that's a very good result because not many teams go to Barnsley and turn them over. Um, Rotherham drew 3-3 to Stoke in their last game out. 
and they're sat in 22nd in the league and five points off safety. So it's all looking like a Swansea victory. But Swansea are looking to win three consecutive away league matches without conceding for the first time since November 2010. What a stat that is. Um, Rotherham have kept just two clean sheets in their last 28 championship matches at the New York Stadium as well. So that's one to bear in mind. I'm going to go with a 3-0 Swansea. What do you think, Ben? A great can't see for Swansea losing, to be honest. So I'm going to, I think 1-0. Jack, what do you think? Um, I'm probably going to have to join Ben's score from the last one and go with 4-1. 4-1 Swansea. Good prediction. Tom, what do you think? I'm glad that Ben's not got in too much delusion that he thinks Rotherham are going to win. <laughs> um, 3 0 Swansea, same as you. What do you think, Lee? I'm going to go the biggest scoreline of them all. I'm going to go 5 0 Swansea. Would well, surprise me, Swansea are in big form and they might be going up and they might be getting an FA Cup. The, last game, the last game is Harrogate Town versus Newport County. Last time out, Newport faced a 3 2 defeat to Waldham away. But that was that was all that was almost like ruled out because Josh Labadee had a 14th minute red card, and to be honest, it completely just threw them off. They're without a win in eight games though, and in ho- a horrible rut. They're sat third in the league though. They're two games in hand, and they're only two points off Cambridge and Forest Green, who are sat in top. But who knows? Harrogate last game out was a 2-2 draw away to Salford. They're sat 18th in the league on 27 points. I'm going to go with a. 1-1. I don't see Newport getting through this with a win. What do you think, Ben? agree with you, but I actually think Harrogate 1-0. Jack, what do you think? I have to join you, Ben, and go with uh, 1-0. Tom, what do you think? Go Newport or not? Yeah, 1-0. Same as you. Of course you are. Lee, what do you think? 2-0 Newport. Ooh, interesting. This is sport. Well, there we are. Maybe Newport going up as well. It might be a double... It might be a double Wales promotion this year without Cardiff. Let's ignore them. But anyway, Playing you in that's... League One next season, huh? Playing you in League One next season. <laughs> right, we comment. Right, that's all we got time for on the Welsh Watch today. That was episode eight, and I hope you enjoyed that episode with Helen Maud. If you want to see the full interview from her, go check it out down below. There's some brilliant bits in there. Come back next week because I know Jack has a um, has an interview lined up, which that's tasty as well. If you ask me. But thank you very much for watching. If you want to go check out all our social medias, they're on the screen somewhere. The rest of the episodes are down below. Ben's been on his chair. He wants to go and make his dinner. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, everyone.